Hi everyone, today we're going to look at a topic I get asked about a lot. Now I do get asked for a lot of free advice, um, I know it's a compliment in some ways because people value my opinion, however, I feel quite limited. Um, that said, I do want to help, so here's a few tips on how you can make this work. So, the question that I get asked a lot is, what should I do before my marathon block starts or in between marathon blocks? Now, as ever, the context is hugely important here, so it's really important that you think about what your scenario is, what you've just achieved, if you've just done a marathon and you're going into another block, what you're looking to achieve, this is your first marathon, if it's a particularly hard course, all the factors we've talked about in other blogs along the way. However, there are some straightforward tips you can apply. And if you find marathon training particularly stressful, I'll actually say take your foot off the gas a little bit. You have to keep up some volume and some quality of training, however, it doesn't need to be anywhere near as intense or as voluminous, for want of a better phrase. You don't need to be putting in tons and tons of miles necessarily, as long as your longer term marathon goals are reflected with that. So if you are looking to achieve something bigger, you do need to push and build. Now that brings us on to the main topic of this, which is build. You want to build something in this period. So say you've got six weeks between finishing one block of marathon training or maybe half marathon training, take a couple of weeks down, nice and easy, and then you want a six week period to really hit it. Now in that, you want to build something, whether it be speed, distance, or frequency to allow you to build distance. So first off, let's start with speed. Your 10K time, your half marathon time, may not project, project you the marathon time that you're looking for. So the disparity there, in all likelihood, is gonna be needed to be addressed by increasing speed. Not always the case, because it does depend. Some people do run better over longer distance than they do the short stuff myself included. So I don't necessarily work too much on that, I do it to keep it on top of things, but some people will really need to push that side of things and just get quicker. That allows that to transfer up into the longer distances, again, to varying degrees. The other side you might want to do is build the volume of your running. Now you can look at this in multiple ways. The thing that I find most with people is that they're coming into it with not enough long run volume. So they were often coming into blocks of training with you know, eight to 10 miles a week of long run, Really, that's not a lot of time, uh, not a lot of time on feet, for want of a better phrase, and uh, not a lot of time that you then got to build up upon that through the marathon block. So you have to take things a bit more gently and actually kind of shortcut a couple of things sometimes to make that happen. So missing out on higher intensities to, to build up a greater volume in the training, which is biggest, basically the biggest uh, kind of predictor of marathon success is the number of miles overall. That's a whole different thing. Um, but the other side that we want to build up, so we do want to build that in. Now, outside of marathon training, I tend to go between 13 and 16 miles per week, typically easy running, but again, it does depend on what I'm doing on training. For most people though, I'd say 10 to 13 miles is good. Ideally, again, you might start with 10 miles a week two or week three after your last marathon or half marathon, and then build up half a mile to a mile every week or a mile every other week potentially as well, depending on the time frame you have. Marathon block there, you want to be looking at 12, 13 miles, an absolute base to build up. You want to be doing probably 16 or 12 week block, obviously. So if you're doing 12 miles or 12 week block, you've got basically 10 weeks by the time you take into a taper, nine to 10 weeks to build up to maybe up to 20 miles. Again, that long run mileage does depend on your speed. If you're running a four hour plus marathon, you might not need to hit 20 miles. It might not make sense to run 20 miles in longest because of recovery. So again, factor your particular context, your times, your goals, and obviously your availability in training. The other thing you can do as well is build frequency. Now, the increase of long run obviously adds volume to your overall week, but increasing the frequency of your running can also be a really good way to do that. If you're currently running, say, two five mile easy runs, 10 miles in total across the week of easy running, aside from your effort sessions and things as well. Now, if you want to run one more day per week, you could just add on, say, that were three miles. That's then 13. Great, that's fantastic. But it's potentially another day that you're then tired, you're not recovering as well for your next run. So, what I would tend to do is split them. So instead of two five miles, I would maybe do a couple of threes and a two, uh, sorry, a couple of threes and a four. Now, the option for that is great because it means that you are not overtaxing your body after those harder sessions, you're probably gonna recover slightly better. So during your harder runs in that period of time, you're probably gonna do quite well. You're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel fast, and that's gonna help your speed build. So it has other benefits. The other thing as well is it increases our capacity. Suddenly that three miles, three miles and four miles can become three, four and four, four, four and four, 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 five. Build and build and build, but you can do this as and when it feels like the right time to do so. Give yourself a little bit of range. You can work between three and four miles for a couple of weeks on each of those runs. If one day you feel really tired and you want to take three, do three. There's no big loss. You've not missed an entire run. You've just missed one or two miles here and there. So it gives you much more flexibility. It allows you to build up the uh, the overall volume by increasing the frequency. And obviously by pushing the uh, easy miles, you're going to recover a little bit better as well by shortening those runs, recovery better and you're also building that volume, which is, you know, really, really useful. 
The other option as well, you can actually combine a couple of these things. So you can work to increase your long run distance as long as you keep those easy at the same time as increasing the intensity of your runs by working on speed. You could also increase the length of your long runs by also increasing the frequency. So you might start to step up both at the same time and that usually is going to be absolutely safe and sensible as long as you factor everything else in, taking down the intensity of those miles, maybe a few seconds, 10, 15 seconds more slower than you would perhaps usually run. As ever, the context, like I said at the start, is really, really important. I always have to answer questions, uh, so hopefully this does answer that question for you. If you have any thoughts, if you have any questions about other things you want to know around marathon training in particular, feel free to let me know. Um, I might not be able to give you a direct answer at the time, but I will try and put something together for you that I can then share with other people and everyone benefits from that. Uh, obviously, I don't have a massive amount of time to answer individual questions, uh, certainly without, outside of my kind of coaching and training plan clients, but I try and help where I can. See you soon.